Hi everyone, this is Darren, aka Fizzpop. Guess what? I'm playing hooky today and I got the whole pool to myself. I don't want to dox myself, but this is my condo pool. I'll show you around real quick. There's the goat. They have really good wings and pizza. The burgers are sort of so-so. There's a tiki bar. It doesn't have a tiki, but it is a tiki bar. And then fortunately it won't be open for a couple of hours, so he can't get any drinks yet. And there's the kiddie pools back there. And that's where all the milfs hang out at. And there's a couple of sand volleyball courts. Life is good. Anyway, every summer I pick a book or two to read by the pool. And last summer it was the 1938-39 collection of the spider. And this summer I'd picked another pulp hero, Conan the Barbarian. I usually read by the pool. Unfortunately, this summer, I spent most of my time reading here, the waiting rooms of the James Cancer Hospital. Yeah, <laughs> it's a little depressing, so let's get back to the pool. Conan has appeared in multiple mediums. The first time a lot of people were exposed to Conan was with the 1982 Schwarzenegger movie. Since then, there's been a Jason Momoa film in 2011, then there was also a syndicated TV show. Of course, a lot of us know him from the comic books which got started in the early 1970s, but what a lot of people don't know is that Conan got his start in the 1930s in the pages of Weird Tales. Conan was the creation of Robert E. Howard, and Howard's earlier creations included Cull of Atlantis and Solomon Cain. Howard set all of his characters in different spots on the same timeline, and when you think about it in terms of like the Marvel and DC universes, Howard may have been one of the first authors to build his own fictional universe. I can't think of anyone else off the top of my head. Um, perhaps H.P. Lovecraft with his Cthulhu stories, maybe. The backstory behind Conan begins in Robert E. Howard's childhood. His father was a traveling doctor in Texas when Texas was still the wild, wild west. Robert grew up listening to his father's yarns as well as those spun by old-timers who lived in the wild days. The tales of gunfights, Indian raids, and desperados inspired him to become a writer. Conan actually has a lot in common with the traditional stoic cowboy hero. He's a loner. He's an individual with a personal code of honor. He's also a man with many talents besides wielding a sword. According to some scholars, the first unofficial appearance of Conan happened in a 1932 issue of Strange Tales of Mystery and Terror, in a story called People of the Dark. A character remembers his past life as a dark-haired barbarian who worships a god named Krom. Before 1932 was over, the first Conan story saw print in Weird Tales. The story is called The Phoenix on the Sword. This story is a rewrite of a rejected Cull of Atlantis story called By This Axe I Rule. The story was rejected several times before it was published. After a second or third rejection by Weird Tales, editor Farnsworth Wright sent it back to Howard with a list of corrections. Howard heeded this advice and fixed the story. And that's how Conan was launched into the zeitgeist. Ugh, I hate using the word zeitgeist. You know, I never read Robert E. Howard before, and after reading this, I really wished I'd gotten to it sooner. Howard is an amazing writer. He paints a great fictional landscape. He deservedly has been given the title as the father of the sword and sorcery genre, and by the way, the term sword and sorcery didn't exist at the time of Howard. The term was actually coined in the 1960s by author Michael Moorcock when he was trying to describe Robert E. Howard's work. The book I have is The Coming of Conan, The Sumerian. It has the first 13 stories of Conan in order as they were written. Some of these stories were written but not published until after Howard's death. Reading these stories in their written order allows you to see the evolution of Conan. Howard had the first nine stories written before the first story was ever published, but I'm not sure he had a real story arc in mind when he got started. Here's a few interesting things I noticed. The very first Conan story, The Phoenix on the Sword, I would not call a classic Conan the Barbarian story. It's a King Conan story, and it's just as much court intrigue as it is swordplay. Another really unique story was The God in the Bowl. It's the third Conan story, and it was not published in Howard's lifetime. This story is basically a murder mystery set in a fantasy world setting. 
It was written in the time of S.S. Van Dyke and Agatha Christie. Mysteries were the hot fiction genre of the 1920s and 30s, and I would guess that this tale was heavily influenced by this. One story I have to point out is one of the all-time fan favorites. It's a story called The Queen of the Black Coast. In this story, Conan joins up with a group of pirates under the command of a pirate queen. Of course, Baylit, queen of the pirates, falls for Conan. In this adventure, she orders their ship to sail up a river of madness and death in hopes of finding an ancient treasure. While they travel on the river, Baylit and Conan have a very long discussion about death. I think this discussion gives us a real insight into Robert E. Howard's mental state and contemplation of his own life and death. For those of you who don't know about Robert E. Howard's life, his mother had tuberculosis, consumption as it was called back in the day. And if you've ever seen the movie Tombstone, Doc Holliday, played by Val Kilmer, has tuberculosis. It's a disease that makes it painful to breathe. You also have a never-ending cough, and uh, over time you begin coughing up blood. It's a brutal, slow death. Robert E. Howard lived with his parents, and he was his mother's caregiver. His mother was ill his entire life, so death was a constant on his mind at an early age. The life of Robert E. Howard ends a brief two years after this story was published. His mother went into a coma brought on from the tuberculosis, and he's told by her doctors that she will never come out of it. A distraught Howard went out to his car where he kept a pistol, and he shot himself. It's a very sad end to a great writer. Altogether, Howard wrote 17 complete published Conan stories, four complete unpublished stories, and a number of fragments and synopsises for future stories. We actually know quite a bit about Howard and his thoughts, and if you're interested, there's two volumes of correspondence between Howard and his pen pal, writer H.P. Lovecraft. They write about everything from praising each other's recently published works to politics, philosophy, economics, and travel. Another book called One Who Walked Alone is a memoir by Novelin Price Ellis. She dated Robert E. Howard just before his suicide. This book was turned into a film called The Whole Wide World, and Howard was portrayed on the big screen by actor Vincent D'Onofrio. So, if you're looking for fantastic sword and sorcery stories, you have to check this out. These are the stories that started it all. Well, that's about it for me. Think it's time for a swim. Enjoy life. Later all.